In 1898, construction began on a railway that linked Uganda with the Indian Ocean port of Mombasa in Kenya. But the project had to be somewhat put on hold when workers kept disappearing, and reports kept coming in that the workers were being stalked by two man-eating lions. Construction of the railway began at the port city of Mombasa in British East Africa in 1896. The project was troubled even before it began, with many members of parliament back in Britain seeing it as a huge waste of money, and it was even labeled as a gigantic folly by some. But despite this, the project continued. The region of Savo is a large, wild area in southeast Kenya. The meaning of the word Savo is unclear, but because of tribal conflicts, the Kamba people used to refer to the region as a place of slaughter, even before the lions started attacking. As part of the construction, the British started building a railway bridge over the Savo River in Kenya in March 1898. The building site consisted of several camps spread over an area of 13 kilometers or 8 miles and the project was being led by Lieutenant Colonel John Henry Patterson and it relied heavily on the skills of local laborers as well as Indian workers. As I mentioned, the Kamba people used to refer to the region of Savo as the place of slaughter. That name would find new meaning in early 1898. Patterson had barely just arrived when the incidents that the building of the railway is most known for started happening. A few days after he arrived, they noticed that some of the workers had gone missing. They went out looking for these workers and they would eventually find the workers, or rather, what was left of them and they quickly suspected that they were dealing with either a lion or some other predator. It wouldn't take long before they learned that not only was it a lion, it was two lions. Two mainless male lions that the locals would soon refer to as ghost and darkness. For the next nine months, more and more workers would be taken dragged from their tents at night by the lions. There was a brief period where the attacks ceased, but reports would come in of attacks in other regions. But the lions would soon return to their regular hunting ground, and the attacks would intensify with workers being attacked daily. There were several attempts made to scare off the lions. The crew would build campfires or thorn fences made from whistling thorn trees around their camp. But nothing worked. The lions were undeterred and they would either leap over or crawl under the fences to get at their preferred prey. When the attacks had begun in March, only one of the two lions would enter the inhabited areas to hunt. But as time went on, they became bolder and bolder, with both of these lions entering the areas together. The workers would flee from Savo, which of course halted construction on the bridge, much to the annoyance of the British. Eventually, reinforcement would arrive in the form of around 20 armed infantrymen to assist in the hunt but it would be Patterson himself that ended up putting a stop to the lions. He would first set traps for the lions, but these failed. He also tried several times to ambush the lions at night from a tree, but this also failed. On the 9th of December 1898, he would find and shoot the first lion. According to Patterson, he wounded the lion in its hind leg, but it managed to escape. But it would return later that same night, stalking him as he tried to hunt it. 
At this point he had gotten a more powerful rifle and he would shoot the lion once again, causing it to run away. But he would find the body of the lion in the following morning. According to Patterson, the lion measured almost 3 meters from its nose to the tip of its tail and it took 8 men to carry the lion back to camp. 20 days after shooting the first lion, the other lion was found and shot. According to Patterson, the second lion was shot 6 times before it finally succumbed to its injuries some of which it had sustained 11 or 12 days prior when it had first been encountered and shot six times. So in total, according to Patterson, it would take about 12 shots to take down this lion. After the threat of the lions was gone, construction of the railway would resume and the bridge was finished in February 1899. The exact number of people taken by the lions is unclear. Patterson would give several different figures, but eventually he would claim that it was as many as 135. But in 2001, a review about causes for the man-eating behavior among lions concluded that Patterson's claim of 135 victims were most likely exaggerated. Then, in a 2009 study, Justin Yeekel from the University of California studied the chemical composition of the lion's hair and bones. From this, he estimated that the lions killed around 35 people, with one of the lions eating almost twice as much as the other lion. It should be noted, though, that none of these modern studies have taken into account the people who were killed but not eaten by the animals. Despite this, it's still believed that the number Patterson gave was an exaggeration. Another thing that's been a bit of a mystery for the years after the attacks is why the lions started attacking and eating humans in the first place. There are of course theories, such as the possibility of an outbreak of cattle plague in 1898, which would devastate the lion's usual prey and force them to find alternative food sources. There is also the possibility that humans were encroaching upon their territory, which made it more difficult for them to find a suitable food source. Some studies indicate that the lions ate humans as a supplement to other food, not as a last resort. During one study, it was discovered that one of the Salvo lions was missing three lower incisors, had a broken canine and an abscess in the tissues surrounding the root of another tooth. Pressure on this abscess would have been very painful. The second lion also had damage in his mouth, with one of its upper teeth being fractured. Lions normally use their jaws to grab prey and suffocate them. Damage to the teeth and mouth would make this more difficult. And this has led researchers to believe that the lions started preying on humans simply because we are easier to catch and chew. In 1924, Patterson would sell the lion's skin to the Field Museum of Natural History after keeping the skins as trophy rugs in his home for 25 years. This meant that when the skins arrived at the museum, they were in very poor condition. But the museum was able to reconstruct the lions, which are now on permanent display along with their skulls. Lions are among the most dangerous animals in Africa, and while they may not be as bloodthirsty as their forebears more than a century ago, a lion attacking a human is not unheard of in the region of Savo today. <laughs> 